dear. An own goal in the World Cup. And here comes Craig Brown. Ah, <laughs> uh, don't worry, Tommy. I thought we defended really well. Colin Hendry and Jim Layton played great. <laughs> Who is it? It's Ronaldo! Oh, come in. <laughs> I wish you luck for the rest of the tournament. Oh, I bet Andy Gorham wouldn't have gone home if he'd known there was going to be beaver in the dressing room. <laughs> Dear, I'm worried about the Norway game. We need more aggression up front. Someone who can really thump the Scandinavians. <laughs> Welcome to Fantasy World Cup Live. Live. Later on, we'll be recreating the funniest moment ever in the World Cup. And we'll be saying a big hello to Ken Hoddle. Hello, I'm Ken Hoddle. <laughs> hello! <laughs> yeah, we did have a lot of people lined up who sounded a bit like footballers, but none of them were as funny as Ken, basically. <laughs> so we brought him back. Yeah. Anyway, first, some things we've noticed from watching football in this World Cup week. Gordon Jury missed a few chances this afternoon. This may be something to do with the fact that the last time he scored for Scotland, he said the celebrations made him feel a bit sick. <laughs> and he acted to rumours that Louise Woodward was in the stand. <laughs> Can't be too Trouble. careful. And... <laughs> Reports are coming out of France 98 suggesting the existence of a group of masochists in football. Apparently, the more badly injured they are, the more sexually aroused they become. <laughs> <laughs> and at Glenn Hoddle's 18-minute press conference just after announcing the England squad, he used the word situation 14 times. Here's a small selection. There wasn't other situations. I think he went into his room. The, them two guys went out in injury, with a total injury situation. And this is becoming a little bit of the Paul Gascoigne situation. <laughs> Possibly Ian Wright situation, you know, lost time. But in the end, you just can't... You can't worry about all these situations. <laughs> That's right. Where's Stato? Where's Stato? Where is Stato? <laughs> Where, him, where is, is Stato? Oh, there it is. <laughs> if you, Hello, if you didn't see the opening ceremony, this won't mean a lot to you, really. But um, <laughs> if you did, you'll laugh. Oh, oh he's over. Over. you got up your arse. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what's in the news this week? Uh, well, well it's funny. I, I like the thing in the Express. They say that England team was represented by a traditional biscuit cake on arriving at their World Cup headquarters. The hotel manager, Fabrice Jobard, said, the biscuit cake is quite expensive. It is not a survival biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yes. What is uh, a survival what? biscuit? I, I don't know. Well, I think a survival biscuit might be Something like this. Here's, here it is. Now, if you were stuck somewhere with this biscuit, <laughs> what you could easily do, right, is... <laughs> yes. That's clever. 
Though I don't think Glenn Hodler like a gift that included a bottle hope, no, would he? <laughs> <laughs> no, here you go. And obviously, if there was, if this was the Argentinian team, there'd be a small spoon. <laughs> Some people pretending not to get that. OK, good. <laughs> One of the great things about being on live is that we thought we could settle some important football debates here, now, live in the studio, by conducting a phone poll of our viewers' opinions. We'll be doing a few of these throughout the series. Yes. Now, some of you may have noticed that Pele was at the opening match this afternoon. And you often see Pele, don't you, at games and football events all over the world. Yes. And Pele shag around. <laughs> If your answer is, yes, Pele shags around, <laughs> phone 0891 665 504. If it's no, he's too scared of kiss and tell stories and AIDS, <laughs> phone 0891 665 505. And we'll be getting the results of our phone poll later on in the programme. Mm. Now, there's been a lot of talk about pundits for the World Cup. The BBC have got David Ginola, ITV have got Rude Hullet, and this is who we've got. Billy McKinley. Is it the guest? Good Lord, it's Kirsty Young and Clive Anderson. <laughs> Welcome. So, welcome. Now, mm. without further ado, as obviously one thing we have to ask you, do you think Pelly shags around? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think he did all right in the uh, 1966 World Cup when he was over here. Him and uh, Nobby Styles, of course, he did. Yeah. Uh, I hope did he didn't uh, shag around during the 66 World Cup because he always used to say he didn't get enough protection. Yes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and anything could have happened there, yeah. couldn't he? Would I you, Kirsty? So. Would you? Um, would you be interested if Pelly? Would you? <laughs> Perhaps I should move on. <laughs> you pimp. <laughs> Pimping for Pele here. This is rather bizarre. <laughs> well, I mean, Pele, he, must, admit, he must get off as Andy Pele. I would imagine so. Well, yeah. you, you must do all right here, don't you? Yeah, but we're all not your... like Pele, are we? No, Pele you're all not. over no, the world, not. you know, wife back at home. Yeah. Thing. I mean, yeah. he, he might not be heterosexual. We don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> he might not. <laughs> say that about Pele. I'm only saying might not. You could see <laughs> the tabloid headlines, couldn't you? Pele for the guy. <laughs> Move on to the game. Uh, the still. choice of this oh, or Desmond Lyman, I think I made the wrong choice here. this one in, K.Y. Pelly. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, what did you think about... Um, you, now, I should, we should establish, first of all, you obviously uh, uh, sound in Scottish and being Scottish, Kirsty, you're a Scotland fan. I am. But not many people know, Clive, that you're a Scotland fan. Oh, yes, well. no, I inherited all my football interests from my father, who's very... Very Scottish, so, um, so uh, you know, I've got a Scottish father, Scottish grandparents. So under the rules of international sport, I could, in fact, play for Ireland. So, yes. it's, uh, <laughs> so I've, you know, I was, I was emotionally draining, I thought, the, the in game. Fact, so yeah. nestling yes, in his lap, can I, I do that? Is, don't worry about nestling in my lap. Old age person it won't be blank. nestling. Yeah. Um, what did you think about today? Were you upset about when the own goal went in? I was. I mean, I thought, I did think they were magnificent. And I speak to all my English friends and they say they were a bit third-rate, but I think... As a, <laughs> that, as a they, that is what they've said. And as a confirmed Scotland fan, I think they, they did us proud. Well, obviously, mm. playing Brazil, you don't expect to win, so you start the game thinking, oh, it, it doesn't matter too much. Then you go, gold down, oh, it's a disaster. Then you get an equaliser, and then, of course, you talk yourself into the idea, might just snatch a win here. Mm. And so, 2 1, the end of the oh, it's a disaster. I haven't drained. Are you? But I suppose it's not too bad. You know, 2 1. Got well, this might, this might cheer you and Tommy Boyd up. This is the best own goal of all time, which was scored by Charlie Untmark of Walsall when they were playing against West Ham. Tommy Boyd was unlucky. It was just a, it was just a ricochet, was wasn't it? Because was... we've well, got his yeah, this, is, here. this is from the Scottish Daily Record yes. today, and apparently oh, Tommy no. Boyd is a Sagittarius. Oh, you probably mm. knew that. Only good form. <laughs> <laughs> you have an excellent chance of winning through with something that's been terribly important to you for a long time. Lucky colour, yellow. <laughs> <laughs> that's real. Yes. That's real. Now that they did all right. I think uh, Christian Daly is good. Glenn okay. Hoddle reads it regularly. That's right. <laughs> 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 how, 
How Scottish do you actually feel, though, Clark? Do you actually feel like a Scot? Uh, yeah, very much so, yes, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I think you're looking for a joke there, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might have one, but no, you've no, no. of everything, can you? <laughs> he does this one you exhausted there. on the Pele ones, but... Yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I sort of taught myself and think, no, I live in England, I should uh, perhaps be more concerned about England, but I, when, the, when the matches come up, especially sporting matches, I just can't stop myself being completely, completely there. And it's, it's not a great thing to be, because Scotland don't no, win that many thing things, do, do they? It's, it's sort of, but it's a good balance for me, because I support Arsenal, and they at le least do win quite a lot, especially this season with a double. And thank you, thank you. Being a West Bromwich Albion fan, you know, I get used to, you know, not too much success. Yeah, but if you know what I mean. At least I am from West Bromwich. Yes. Right. Yeah. I don't go like you go, glory chasing after Scotland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting that because um, Keith Allen, who of course has done um, one of the England songs yeah. uh, at the moment, he's Welsh. Yeah. Did you know that? No, you're just putting that around because it's rivalry yeah. with the song composing, Obviously, aren't you? That is exactly why we're doing yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> You've updated your song, haven't you? A bit, yeah. although we've so got... it's not 30 years of hurt, it's now 32 years of hurt, isn't it? No. we 34 and then yeah. 36 as the years go forever. Gone forever. <laughs> no, yeah. I, I can't believe, though, about Keith Allen. That, that, you know, this is the yeah. Vindaloo song, that the bloke who did it, and he did World in Motion, and he did England's Irie, yeah. and apparently he's Welsh. But how Welsh is he? Yeah, because I'm Scottish the way Rod Stewart is Scottish, right. or Bob Wilson is Scottish. Is he just... Well, apparently he was, he was... No, but he was playing for, in goal for Brazil this afternoon. Oh, no, that was Taffarel. <laughs> 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 Oh, oh, I loved it. <laughs> it was another oh, well the salt. <laughs> Let's start with the Welsh puns. No, but that's a, I think that's fascinating. Yeah. No, I, mean, I don't know. So it... is that going to disallow his record now? He's too I Welsh. Hope so. Well, it'll stop me buying it. That's all I'm yeah. saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Vindalik. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> also, I don't like that bit on it with the harp and the male voice choir. It spoils it. <laughs> yes. 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 It's the goat they leave on at the beginning. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know, I wish we were in a position where we could cop these bits out. It's like the old <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's life. Anyway, yeah. now great moments from Bridget Nielsen's chat show. <laughs> it's real. It is real. You think I'm making it up, but it is real. Episode one. Bridget mispronounces a word, and Roger Moore looks absolutely appalled. What I wanted to ask you to, it's, it's always about children, but it's something that is really up and about, and it has been the last couple of years, and it's about uh, pedophilism, especially in Italy and in, in Europe. And in uh, Roger, it's terrible. Yeah. That's the best facial expression he's ever done. That's it's it's like bad, bad, it? Roger. It looks like an embalmed corpse. It's <laughs> <laughs> Where was, where was that done? Is that an English? That's in a chat show that she does in no, Denmark. No, in Denmark, yeah. That's in it looked like World of Leather or something. <laughs> <they were saying. laughs> I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, I mean, have you ever had a Scottish accent, Clive? What? Uh, not particularly. I used to. I used to think I have one. I used to sort of perform with a Scottish accent, but unfortunately, apparently, I used to sort of do it quite well and then lapse out of it as I delivered the punchline. So it wasn't that convincing. So right. I had to stop doing it. Right, because yeah. did you go to elocution lessons? Is that is that right? Gosh, he's a dead. Yes, at home I used to speak like Rab C. Nesbitt, but <laughs> <it> was, uh, <laughs> I was brought up in a, a Scottish enclave in London, a sort right. of Scottish area, and we did Scottish country dancing and <laughs> to a Scottish church and a Scottish. It was, yeah, it was fantastic. But it's interesting because I, I was reading about a survey about accents recently, and it said that people are more likely to be suspected of crime especially violent crime, if they have a Birmingham accent, apparently. <laughs> and especially as well if they also play up front for Aston Villa. <laughs> That's fair enough, I think. But, uh, it says here, we this is true, we tend to think people who speak Brummie are less intelligent, less socially competent, <laughs> and more likely to be working class or poor. <laughs> That'll be Kilroy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a terrible. I really resent that sort of. Anyway, oh, carry on. Do you, do you remember? I don't the... really. No, that was yeah, me yeah, messing that... about. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember? Did you watch uh, a lot of football when you were younger? Do you remember the STV commentator Arthur Montford? Absolutely. I remember his jumpers more than yeah. I remember him. I remember his jumpers. Well, he he was always very worried that people wouldn't recognise his accent. Yeah. But in fact, he'll play this afternoon <laughs> against the Dundee side. <laughs> 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 The sheepskin yeah. car coat, can you? Yeah. It's always going to look good, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I'm glad we're not any more sequences of bad bits from chat shows. I was a bit worried you were going to no, forget no. any of my programmes ever. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't do that to you. I've interviewed Roger Moore. I think he put in that same expression with me as well. <laughs> I wonder what um, Glenn Hoddle <laughs> thinks about this. I'm not, I'm not here at this moment in time to talk about that situation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, situation. <laughs> 
There was two there. You miss one, you see, with your, with your over enthusiasm. I'll tell you what's a great World Cup thing that's on at the moment. You ever notice the, when the news stories start coming out about the national grid? Are really worried that there'll be a big oh, yeah, surge yeah. of power at half time. Yeah. Every World Cup, you get that. And anyone watching now, what you want to do at half time in this show, when they're not expecting it, they're all having a fag at the National Grid, right? <laughs> is put the kettle on, put the sunbed on, maybe a, you know, <laughs> of electric fires. And let's see if we can put out a couple of hospitals. <laughs> and now. Come with us on a little trip down memory lane. That's one thing I'll never forget about the 1970 World Cup. Was all the olds were going to shirts and shorts like perforations. And I said to Alan Mullery one day, I said, Alan, I says, these shirts and shorts, they're full of holes. We look like tea bags. He says, You what? I says, The shirts and shorts look like tea bags. He went, Oh. <laughs> 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 We haven't, you know, uh, had that situation there. Darren's played out there before. Um, he played there this morning and did very well. So there's, there's some situation there. <laughs> did, you, did you feel played well for Scotland today? Oh, I thought uh, Collins played well. He didn't have much enough of the game. Um, Jim Layton played pretty well. Um, I, uh... <laughs> <laughs> he did. He had a lot of Vaseline on his forehead. He did, yes. I, uh, what, what does that do, do you think? Does that, does that help? <laughs> In what respect? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> What do you do with your head when you've covered it with vaseline? Uh, let's not... <laughs> where, where do you... Yeah. Oh, hang on. It's a Scottish thing. I'll yeah, tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Colin Henry. Henry played well, didn't you think? Uh, yeah, I did. I, yeah, I did think. I mean, apart from the hairdo, I thought he played very well. Well, yeah. it's funny you should bring that up because um, there are a lot of children right to this show and they say, you know, we play <laughs> games at, at home and we'd love to be Colin Henry. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's not very easy. Well, it is children. Um, all you need is one of these wigs you can get from any um, local hardware store and, 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 and a thin flexible sheet of perspex right and what you do just bear with me on this i go uh, you go in here like this right <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any questions for Colin? <laughs> Obviously, this is Colin Hendry as an old man with a small beard. <laughs> That's very disrespectful, I think. But, Colin, uh, how, did you enjoy the game against Brazil today? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I have to walk around with a big sheet of perspex on my head. <laughs> and, you know, I, I can't breathe. Yeah. <laughs> Could you Morocco, try... Morocco and Norway both look pretty good. Are you, are you frightened about the games against them? No, no, I'm not frightened of either of those because we... um, we've given up already. <laughs> did, you, uh, did you go to the same elocution teacher as I did? <laughs> Would you say... No, but I went to the same hairstylist. <laughs> oh, Would you um... say that I was uh, the best player you've ever played against? <laughs> <laughs> Either that was Ronaldo or Ulrika <laughs> hit him back. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Anyway, look, um, now it's time for our competition. This is very exciting. And uh, tonight it's called Spot the Difference. <laughs> now, don't, don't rush into I this can't, one. I don't know. <laughs> Can you tell the difference at all? No. I don't like the tenor of the show. You've been ma making fun of chat shows and uh, bald, bald people. people. So, uh, I'm not sure this is going well. No, OK, we'll, we'll draw back from yeah. that. One of those was Brian Moore, anyway. Yeah. If you've got any ideas, write in. <laughs> Brian Moore's not very popular in Scotland, is he? Since that, after that time, he accused Robert Fleck of incest. Did you give your mum one on Saturday? No. <laughs> So, what was that David Ginnell story you were 
going yeah, on? Yeah, well, this is quite interesting. David Ginola uh, insists his World Cup dreams were ruined by good looks. He said he had to put up with uh, too much jealousy from other players uh, in snapping. It's unforgivable to play football and be quite good looking. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But if he was out the squad for being good looking, why was Phil Neville sent home? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Make any sense? No. Oh, God. Is that Phil Neville come to get his house back? Good luck. I'll, I'll see who that is. I'll say I'll see who that is. <laughs> it's Ken Hoddle. Ken Hoddle. <laughs> I'm Ken Hoddle. <laughs> Tell me, Ken, do you always speak like that? Speak like what? <laughs> <laughs> Ken Hoddle, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> well done, Ken. And it's now... Oh. Sure that people prefer that accent to your accent, as it turns out. <laughs> that is absolutely yeah. true, yeah. <laughs> You're uh, right. From now on, I'll remember <laughs> that. <laughs> it's much better. And now, World Cup Phoenix from the Flames. Phoenix from the Flames, Phoenix from the Flames, Phoenix from the Flames, Phoenix from the Flames, Phoenix from the Flames. So, Ilunga, in the 1974 World Cup, you played for Zaire. What would you say was the funniest moment ever in the history of the World Cup? Eh ben, il y avait le choix de Jimmy Hill, juriste, pour ITV pendant la Coupe du Monde de 1970 de porter cette cravate. The kind of football that the Italian league produces is normal, not the one you use. Il y avait également la contribution de l'Arabie Saoudite à la cérémonie d'ouverture de la Coupe du Monde de 1994. <laughs> Et ceci est pas mal non plus, hein? Arrêtez sourd! Arrêtez le tail! Non, non, non. Actually, Ilonga Mawaipu, defender for Zaire in the 1974 World Cup, this is the funniest ever World Cup moment. <laughs> <laughs> so, Alunga, we're going to recreate that free kick. What you've got to do, basically, is, um... Oui, je me souviens que Gérard Sinstad faisait les commentaires. Vous vous souvenez de Gérald? Ils disent qu'il s'est arrêté en train de se masturber dans un chemin extra. Non, 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 les charges ont été Il était à l'époque, en fait, un copain. Right, OK, uh, anyway. Tiens, les voilà, sale diable. <laughs> anyway, Lunga, what you need to do to get this recreation right is basically... Can someone get rid of this dog as well? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Come on, Sandy. Sandy, come on. That's a good girl. That's a good girl. That's a good girl. Sit. Good girl. Good girl. OK, let's do it. Me and Frank will be the Brazilians, and you, you be a Lunga Mawepu. Me, Gerard Sinstad. No? So come on, third, you match. None of them very anxious to join a wall. None of them very anxious to join a wall. Attendez un instant. Il a sifflé. Mais les Brésiliens ne l'ont pas encore tiré. Moi, je pourrais les frapper. C'est une bonne idée, ça. Je ne veux pas faire quelque chose, mais on l'a encore fait. Je passerai à la postérité. Ceci va devenir la manœuvre Il n'y a pas de Tout le monde me répétera.
bloke he was. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Clive. Thanks a lot, Kirsty. Thank you very much. Good luck to you. That's it. That's the rehearsal. Friday's guests are Pele and Brian Moore. Who on earth could this be? Who is he? I'm Jeff. Have you come as Bridget Nielsen? I'll see you tomorrow night. OK. <laughs> Jeff Astle, ladies and gentlemen. Just don't come home. Too soon Just don't come home Too soon I don't care what people say We can laugh this all away If I have a dream at all It's that once you won't be It would be silly not to have uh, a situation where you know, we don't. We can't contact people. <laughs>